Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and I was right. If you can hear that, I hope the mic's picking that up. That's me brushing my shoulder off because I'm right, damn it. The Stellar and XLM uh, MoneyGram partnership uh, is, is not a threat to Ripple and XRP. It has nothing to do with Ripple's previous business arrangement with MoneyGram, but there are people all over crypto uh, it's on social media pretending like this is a some sort of clear indication that uh, Ripple's on-demand liquidity product, which utilizes XRP as a bridge currency, this is supposed to be evidence that it doesn't work, this or that. And I, I tell you, what, I read the, uh, the the press release from MoneyGram uh, multiple times, two times in its its uh, in its totality, and then multiple key por other key portions of it multiple times, again and again and again. And as I read through it, I was just like, why are people saying that? I just kept thinking, why are people saying that that uh, this arrangement between the Stellar Development Foundation and MoneyGram is the same as the relationship that Ripple had with MoneyGram. And reading through it, I recognized that it was not different and that there was no indication I, th that uh, that it was the same thing. And I acknowledged, I was like, look, uh, it's a press release. It can be vague. Uh, maybe there's additional information. And if that comes out, then fine, I'll change my tune. If it's the same thing that they're offering here, of course, I'll acknowledge that. But I said, based on the way that they've worded everything in here, it doesn't seem reasonable to believe that this is anything remotely the same. This is not apples to apples. This is an apples to oranges comparison. And people didn't know that. And they ran with the story and the idea that this was somehow horrible for Ripple and XRP. And so I put out a video on this just yesterday morning. And I stated my case. And I also stated the case as to why I think that utilizing a stable coin as a bridge currency, like XRP is being positioned as a bridge currency, I articulated my position as to why that's a horrible idea. Uh, I'm not going to relitigate that in this video. Uh, I covered that thoroughly just yesterday, but I still stand by that point. But then after I put out that video yesterday morning, later in the day, MoneyGram CEO Alex Holmes came out and confirmed what I told you in the video, uh, in my video just a day ago, a little over 24 hours ago, he came out and confirmed exactly what I thought was the case, which is that this has nothing to do with it. And I'm going to share with you, I transcribed a quote from him in an interview when he was speaking with Coindesk. And I want to break this down a little bit further here. Maybe we can put this damn thing to bed because there's still people today, even after these comments from uh, Alex Holmes, MoneyGram CEO, even after that, there are still people insisting that what is happening here is an indication that Ripple's failing, XRP's bad, so on and so forth, and I'm just going to go ahead and place that concept in the wood chipper right where it belongs. Ain't nobody got no time for that damn nonsense, but I want to be clear, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who makes uh, YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby, just for fun. That's all that's going on here. And so, to be clear here, the Stellar Development Foundation, uh, which is now partnered with with uh, with MoneyGram, that partnership and, and XLM, uh, and the 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 stablecoin USDC that uh, that they're working with with via this partnership, not threats. None of that is a threat to Ripple and XRP and XRP's position as a bridge currency. And so, understand this: Ripple is working on improving cross-border payments and settlement meaning people not holding cryptocurrency can benefit because XRP is used in the plumbing, unbeknownst to them. So you could just not know cryptocurrency exists and then benefit from the speed and costs associated with XRP being utilized via on-demand liquidity as a bridge currency, which is, is part of the most... Well, here, I'd say like this. That's one of the most appealing things about this to I me. Mean, there are a lot of things that are very appealing, but you don't have to onboard people into crypto for this for XRP to be adopted and used further. That's amazing. That's awesome, right? Because that that's that's not a barrier. And so, you know, the the MoneyGram and Stellar Development Foundation partnership is utilizing USDC, the stablecoin USDC, uh, and that's that's very different. And so what they're doing, and it's just what I reported on yesterday. They're targeting customers that are already in cryptocurrency. If you don't hold crypto, you're not a potential customer under this approach. It's not the same thing. And it's estimated that somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe perhaps 3% of humans on the planet uh, hold crypto. So it's a small segment of people, generally speaking. But, of course, I'm happy to report that, that percentage of humans holding crypto. It's increasing. It's going to be way, way, way bigger. And, and so what they're doing actually makes sense. But it, it absolutely is not the same. 
And so if, here's the here's the press release from PR Newswire uh, provided by MoneyGram, and it's titled MoneyGram announces innovative partnership with the Stellar Development Foundation to utilize blockchain technology. I ran through this yesterday, not going to run through the whole thing, except for this one key sentence, which should have given it away. And if anybody out there who was saying that this was a slam against Ripple and XRP had just read the damn thing, then you know it wouldn't make sense to believe that. And so I was waiting for additional information to come out to confirm one way or another if I was right. And I was right. But here's the sentence. I'll highlight it on your screen right here. This, this is from MoneyGram. For consumers, the partnership will provide the ability to seamlessly convert USDC to cash or cash to USDC. Think about that, folks. If you have USDC and you want to convert it to cash, if you hold USDC, that means you're in crypto already. That's completely different than utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. Because look, the truth of the matter is, like what RippleNet does with on-demand liquidity utilizing XRP, it automates something that people could do on their own. Uh, and, and I've talked about this before too. I could, since I have XRP, I could go ahead, if I wanted to send you money rather than using a remittance firm, since I'm into crypto and I know how to do this, I could go ahead and put my, my XRP that's in cold storage on an exchange in, here in the United States where I live, send it to you over in whatever country you're in. Uh, let's assume that it's a country with, that uses a different fiat currency. So, I mean, hell, it could be Mexico. Let's say it's the Mexican peso. Let's say you're Mexico. So I send it over to you on, um, I could either send it directly to your address, that's a cold storage, or I could send it to your address on your cryptocurrency exchange. Let's say it's Bitso, that's a Mexican Mexico-based cryptocurrency exchange. And then you can sell, take that XRP and then sell it manually yourself. And then when that gets to your bank, it's just converted into pesos. That's, that's just how it works. So we can do this automatically, but that's a huge barrier for adoption for most people. It's like, even though you and I could do that because we're in the know, we understand this. Almost 100% of humans that are moving money around are not in crypto whatsoever, and it's extremely difficult to onboard them. And so utilizing RippleNet and on-demand liquidity, this is all automated, and they don't have to worry about any of this, right? And then as things transition and more and more humans jump into crypto, you know, the need for that technology could go away or shift. But if XRP is still useful for other things, well, there you go. And it could be used in place of money, and people can still manually do the same service they want. So it doesn't mean XRP is no longer useful. No, no, no. There are tons of different use cases. This isn't bad. I'm just talking about the way this thing could actually evolve and unfold over time. But again, upon reading this, you're talking about consumers converting USD to cash and vice versa. Why would anyone think that has anything to do And so with, with, with uh, Ripple and MoneyGram? And I think that people, even if they did read this, they didn't read it carefully or they simply didn't get it. And so right there, I was like, guys, there's nothing in this about the, about uh, USDC or XLM being used as a bridge currency. In fact, XLM, Stellar Lumens, their cryptocurrency, has nothing to do with anything that MoneyGram has talked about. They're talking about utilizing a stable coin uh, for, for converting back and forth for customers that are already in crypto. And so shout out to Digital Assets Daily. I came across this clip from Coindesk, uh, thanks to Digital Assets Daily. And so I want to give a shout out there. I just, I just happened upon it in my, my Twitter feed. And I wanted to share with you this quote. So I transcribed this. It's one minute and 15 seconds long. And I transcribed this. You've got a panel here on Coindesk. And in the center, this gentleman here is Alex Holmes. That's the CEO of MoneyGram. And the host who is in the top left in red, she asked Alex Holmes the following. Why did you feel Stellar is a better fit than Ripple? And check this out. This validates everything that I just said yesterday before he publicly stated all of this. Uh, Holmes said, you know, the Ripple product was very, very different, right? We were doing a lot of back-end foreign exchange training across border. I think as we've said, you know, many times, the process and technology works. We had a great experience with Ripple. They tend to focus on a lot of the back-end pieces. They're obviously focused quite a bit on cross-border and funds flow through RippleNet. With the changes and the challenge that the SEC put forward, it was very difficult for us to continue in that relationship based on the way that it was structured, and so we both agreed to move on. So I'll just pause right there. This, this is what I stated yesterday also, right? So that's acknowledgement. They had a great experience with Ripple. He validated right here the use case of XRP as a bridge currency, and he also acknowledged the reason that the, the relationship had to be dissolved ultimately, and it was agreeably dissolved upon, was because of the SEC. It other, that otherwise would not have happened. And then his comments proceed. He, he said the following. Um, 
Yeah, let me just read the last sentence of this close. Uh, with the changes in the challenge that the SEC put forward, it was very difficult for us to continue in that relationship based on the way that it was structured. And so we both agreed to move on. The partnership here with Stellar is very, very different. It's much more focused on the front end consumer and the ability to interoperate between fiat and the stable coin. Stellar approached us with the idea we thought it was a great one. Again, MoneyGram wants to be very proactive and very progressive in innovation and pushing forward across blockchain and thinking about how we can bridge between the two different worlds. So we're excited about it and we think it's a great partnership. There you go. So the partnership probably actually legitimately makes a lot of sense and good for them. Has nothing to do with XRP, has nothing to do with Ripple or the same use case, good for them. It, you know, it's the same thing like in terms of converting USDC to cash, it's, it's the same thing that you could do with a cryptocurrency exchange. MoneyGrams is branching out into additional functionality. So what? This has nothing to do with what Ripple is doing here. Yet we had claims like this. Uh, here's somebody on Twitter named C3Nick, and I want to be clear before I say anything further. Uh, this is not an attack on C3Nick, but I am challenging the ideas that he's been espousing for the last couple of days on this topic. Uh, I think that he's in the wrong. And you, you know, you're all welcome to think whatever you want, but I just want to be clear, this is not a personal attack. Um, I don't need people to agree with me for me to like and respect them. Additionally, um, even if people are wrong, as long as they're coming from an honest place, I, I like a thoughtful discourse, even if we, we disagree. I think that's valuable. I like people that are honest critics of Ripple and XRP, because if they know something that I don't know, I want to know that too, because that might impact um, it, it could, it could to some degree, or it impact the way that I, I think or feel about XRP or long-term viability or this or that. I, I'd want to know. As an XRP holder, anything bad about XRP, if it's true, I do want to know that, and you should too if you're listening to this. So again, nothing against Nick. I just, I'm going to challenge his ideas because I, I just think he's he's wrong, and I think he jumped the gun on some of this stuff here. So um, here was a tweet from uh, the other day, before. Alex Holmes, MoneyGram CEO, made those comments that I transcribed and shared with, you, shared with you just a moment ago. Here's what C3 Nick did, and this is what everybody did that I found. I didn't find anybody that read it and came to the conclusion that I did. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying anybody that was publicly talking about it, they thought that this was somehow uh, somehow rippled just an acknowledgement that, that the product doesn't work, this or that. Uh, and I just, I was like, there's no evidence of that whatsoever. So anyway, here's what C3 Nick wrote. It's your choice if you didn't believe me when I pointed out some clear red flags when it comes to XRP and the adoption of on-demand liquidity. Now, a close former partner like MoneyGram actively migrated away from Ripple exactly as predicted months ago. Maybe it's time to pay attention now. And then he wrote, Oh, Nick, why are you so critical when it comes to XRP? Why did you sell a long time ago and buy other assets? And then he said, it's all pointed out on Twitter since all the way back in 2019. All the tweets which received the least likes are coming into light now, turning out to be true. Uh, and so, again, he thought that the fact that Stellar Development Foundation partnered with MoneyGram, he just read a headline probably, or maybe he read the press release and just didn't understand what he was reading. That would that, be the case too. Either way, he took in that information and thought that this was a replacement for on-demand liquidity. It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it whatsoever and this is this is the analysis that i kept getting from people over and over and over again and it's 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 a bad take it just is and uh, and c3 nick happened to be very pro xrp i don't know what changed i've seen some of his stuff i just think he's wrong that's fine he can think i'm wrong he probably doesn't even know who i am but he shared these ideas with like uh, here almost twenty five thousand people on twitter so i, I want to kind of set the record straight that this is this is a bad take um and, and but so anyway yeah he I just i don't know how you come to the conclusion it's just, I guess a lot of assumptions had to be made or something like this. And so it, it's fine if he doesn't like XRP uh, for this use case. And, he, and by the way, he's, he's not saying that XRP is going to zero or stuff like that. He's had other t another recent tweet I saw, I'm not highlighted in the video, where he's like, he's not, he admitted like he's not saying that XRP is going away or anything like that. And so I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying he's wrong on the facts on this. Um, and that's fine. Like people, I don't need people to agree with me for me to respect and like them. I just think they're wrong and I want to talk about this so that we can clear the record. Like that's why I'm so glad I have this platform so I can just set the record straight. Um, and then there was this also from, from uh, C3 Nick. Uh, he wrote, The SEC lawsuit is not prohibitive for using RippleNet, but MoneyGram switched to Stellar and USDC anyway. Maybe that's somewhat relevant for those who think outside of echo chambers, question mark. Except for then again, you're wrong on the facts, C3 Nick. 
Uh, they didn't switch from uh, XRP as a bridge currency to USDC as a bridge currency. That is not even close to what happened. Not even close. Um, and then as far as, as MoneyGram no longer using RippleNet, I'm not privy to the specifics, but I just shared with you a quote literally yesterday from Alex Holmes, MoneyGram CEO, who says that XRP and on-demand liquidity works. Do you, are you calling him a liar? Because he says it works. Now, as far as RippleNet, which doesn't have to use uh, XRP because you're just talking about the messaging portion, which is different from on-demand liquidity, which is the settlement portion, which does require XRP. If you're just talking about the messaging portion, which is RippleNet, uh, if, they're, if, if they're not using it, and presumably they're, they're not, I mean, maybe they still have an account open with Ripple, even though the arrangement, the, 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 the contractual arrangement they had, that was severed. Um, if they're not using RippleNet for messaging, I don't know why, but even then you're not talking about XRP failing or anything like that or on-demand liquidity failing. You're talking about a messaging portion. If they're using the messaging portion with, with Swift GPI or whatever they're using, uh, okay, fine. That doesn't impact XRP. They can't use XRP right now due to the legal concerns right now because of the SEC, right? That's all that it is. So again, wanted to highlight that to set the record straight. And as far as on-demand liquidity, because he also said in his, his other tweet, uh, you know, he wrote, uh, it's your choice if you didn't believe me when I pointed out some clear red flags when it comes to XRP and the adoption of on-demand liquidity. Okay, well, I, I don't buy the argument. In fact, here's a Ripple Insights blog piece from April 14th this year. Uh, Novati taps on-demand liquidity to improve Australian remittance payments to Southeast Asia. Now, the official announcement of this actually came out, I believe, in December of, of late, so it would be late last year. But this is them acknowledging, yes, we're going to utilize XRP as a bridge currency. And even after the lawsuit happened, I, I didn't pull up the article for the purposes of this video, but I remember this and I covered it on my channel. Uh, Novati, we got word that they, they publicly announced they're expanding the use case of not just RippleNet, but XRP as a bridge currency this year, even after the lawsuit. I, I've highlighted. So in terms of the, the red flags about XRP, I just see it growing. And we don't get, we're not privy to all the news about customers coming on board. Some of them want to keep that private, but there, there's more. Here's another one. This is from July 28th, 2021. A Ripple launches on-demand liquidity with SBI remit to accelerate and grow cross-border payments from Japan. And so there you go. That's on-demand liquidity utilizing XRP as a bridge currency just a few months ago. Another new development. That's And that's a big one. And so it's not that you get 20 new customers on, with on-demand liquidity per day because XRP, like most of crypto, is not liquid enough for that to happen. But look at the look at how a technology bell curve works. You have slow adoption at first, but then things ramp up very quickly, and that's what I anticipate we're going to see here. Either way, the technology works, and it's a better solution than what else is out there. So that's why I'm saying again, it's a bad take. Uh, here's another uh, few tweets from C3 Nick. The clear sign that something is at least not going according to plan is that Ripple started to chase trends, non-fungible tokens (NFTs for short) instead of focusing on their core expertise. And then he wrote to XRP. Uh, to make one thing very clear, we are looking at this whole situation as an outside observer. I am pointing out indicators which could point towards potential warning signs. It's my opinion. Other opinions can obviously differ. At least I am putting these vantage points out there instead of just going with the default moon narrative. Some appreciate that. Others don't. Yeah, and so uh, to be clear, I do appreciate that. I, I, I think I appreciate that he is out there. He's, he's being a, an actual critic here, but not a troll. This guy's not a troll. I just think he's wrong. I have a different take. He would think I'm wrong. Fine. So, so that's fine. So he's got his take here. As far as the NFTs, though, look, XRPs are the core of everything that Ripple does. And I just cited a moment ago that XRP is not sufficiently liquid. And, and so Ripple's, they are laser focused on their mission just, just because, you know, they're talking about NFTs. It doesn't mean it doesn't have to do with their core mission. And I can, I can cite a couple examples here. So uh, think about the, the Spring Initiative, which has been rebranded Ripple X, for example. Uh, they're helping developers build on top of the XRP ledger, giving them funds, this and that, because they understand a broader ecosystem that's more decentralized, more, more people building on top of the ledger. That's good for them because it's good for XRP, of which they hold a lot. And that can lead to further liquidity, which can help on demand liquidity. So it, it's it's all about the broader ecosystem that I do buy. It doesn't mean they're not laser focused on their core purpose, which is making money move like information moves today, the internet of value. Of course they are, they, they still are. And so similarly with NFTs, this could result in broader adoption of XRP uh, and, and, and in order to set up a trust lines and this and that, of course that util you have to utilize actual XRP because uh, there are reserve requirements. Like all of this would affect supply and demand and this and that and actual adoption of XRP in the XRP ledger. It's all good. It's not outside the wheelhouse. And in terms of like their uh, the, the manpower to make this happen, uh, I don't think it's a lot. It's more like they've invested money uh, in, in, into making this happen. 
you know, they've invested in other platforms to help make make this type of thing happen. But in terms of uh, the, the um, employee resources, I don't think they're stretched thin. There's no indication that uh, the efforts in terms of their sales team and everything it takes to grow RippleNet and on-demand liquidity, uh, there's no evidence that this is going to slow that down whatsoever. So I just I don't think that's that's fine. I disagree with the take. It's nothing that that part's not not so wacky. I just I just don't agree. I don't think it makes sense to 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 think that way. But hey, everybody's entitled to their their own opinion. That's fine. I mean, it also thinks back to and like I'm critical too. Like when I'm think uh, something may or may not make sense. I was critical, uh, not that I thought it was bad, but entirely. But when Ripple announced that they were uh, creating a uh, a trading platform, and then we still have all the uh, the rumors swirling about you know, what would that mean for XRP? Is it basically to create a pool of liquidity for XRP? I was like, okay, well, building an exchange, a trading platform, that seems very outside the wheelhouse of of, of Ripple. But then, and that is a fair critique, and I brought that up because I, I'm I'm not just a everything's great for Ripple and XRP guy. I'll be critical where I need to be, but uh, but you know, on that topic. Uh, I, I, we then found out that Ripple bought a company. They bought an entire company specializing in building digital asset exchanges. We found that out. And so once I was like that, I was like, oh, okay. So they they bought a company, so they, they presumably took the team on board so that they know how to do it. They already know how to do it. Uh, Ripple is flush with cash. They've got way more money than they need. Uh, and so there you go, because you can't keep throwing money at building out on-demand liquidity if the crypto space just isn't big enough because there, uh, there aren't enough humans in crypto right now. Because that's the reason. There's not enough liquidity, but Ripple can't control that. The crypto space is very small. The asset class is $2.3 trillion or whatever it is now. XRP's market cap is somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 billion. Like it's it's just not enough, and Ripple can't control that. So it doesn't matter. They could have all the cash in the world. Like Put it somewhere. And so here, putting it into NFTs where it might make some damn sense... I just don't have a problem with that. I don't think that's a bad or negative thing. That's a positive development. And here's another tweet from C3 Nick. The clear sign that something is not least going according to plan is that Ripple started to chase trends NFTs instead of focusing on their core expertise. Uh, expertise. I think they should realistically have no free resources to engage in the NFT sector if on-demand liquidity would be the smash hit it was set out to be. It is especially weird since the CEO himself wrote the Peanut Butter Manifesto about proper scoping in companies. Yeah, and the Peanut Butter Manifesto has to do with uh, spreading resources too thin. He wrote that back when he was working at Yahoo, and Yahoo was getting it, trying to be a little bit of everything to everyone, so they were experts at nothing, and it was a bad approach. I don't see that as being remotely similar to what's happening with Ripple, uh, as I just outlined here. Like, they have all of this money, but where are they supposed to throw it? They're, they're, yeah, so they're a company flush with cash. So you can't plug that into, you, what are you going to do? Where, C3, Nick, you tell me where they should put that money to grow out on-demand liquidity. Because you got to understand the problem is not throwing money at it. You can't do that. You can't just throw money at on-demand liquidity and then uh, magically people use it. You, the, the problem is twofold, primarily, uh, not sufficient liquidity in XRP and also regulatory uncertainty the world over. Those are the two biggest hurdles here. So the fact that they can't put money into on-demand liquidity and magically make it work doesn't mean they shouldn't spend the, the crazy amounts of cash they actually do have on the books. So putting it into other places where it could benefit the broader XRP ecosystem, as long as it's not taking them, them off the laser focus of creating the internet of value and moving money today, like uh, or moving money like information does today, good, go do it. Because there's no indication that this is taking their eye off the ball. There's every indication that despite the SEC's claims against them, things are going quite well. So anyway, uh, love diversity of thoughts. I'll say it again. Nothing against C3 Nick. I think he's wrong. He'd probably think I'm wrong, and that's fine. You know, uh, Thoughtful adults can, can disagree. So you tell me if you think I'm right or wrong in the comments section below, and, uh, and we can just keep the conversation going there, but I'm going to wrap up. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.